Good morning, and thank you very much for participating today. Uh, we're here to talk about a series of constitutional amendments uh, that is being proposed in the uh, General Assembly that we believe is really important for us to really kind of move forward as a state. You know, it is very interesting if you look at this state's history. Um, you know, a lot of people have made complaints over the years about the power that exists, not just in one party, but has long existed in one individual. And that individual was Mike Madigan, right? And so he has moved on. But interestingly enough, kind of the system that has been established uh, since the Constitution came into being in 1970 continues to exist, continues to really be anti small d democratic and really con concentrates power in the leadership in and into only the hands of the few. And it is this uh, effort that we're doing jointly here today together with both House uh, Republicans and Senate Republicans to propose a series of changes that we believe is vitally important to re-enabling voters to really be able to have power once again here in our state. And so we're, I'm going to run through what some of these are, and then we're going to kick it over to questions to be able to talk about this and the other issues that you may want to discuss today. Uh, the first constitutional amendment that we have filed both in the Senate and the House, SJRCA1 and HJRCA5, permits Illinois voters to make substantial changes to their constitution. So right now, there is only a very limited ability for people to be able to go out, collect petition signatures, and put an amendment on the ballot to amend the state constitution. And really, that is surrounded uh, uh, right around the way in which the legislature functions for the most part. Very limited kind of ability to do other things. For example, several years ago, there was an effort to try to make it re a requirement that fair maps, that there be fair redistricting and not partisan redistricting here in the state. And it was a four or three decision by the Supreme Court to essentially say not allow that to go forward. So what we want to do is change the state constitution to make it easier, not just on an issue like that, but on other issues that the voters really care about, that they can take matters into their own hands and exercise control over the state constitution. So it would allow for citizen initiative amendments like exists in many other states on a broad array of issues within the constitution. It would allow for us to be able to align ourselves with really these best democratic pra practices from other situated states and empower citizens to be able to weigh in on issues such as pension benefits or taxation and redistricting and, and other things like that. Second constitutional amendment that we have introduced and that we want to talk about is something that nearly half of states have, and that is uh, SJRCA2 or HJRCA6, and again, uh, companion constitutional amendments. But almost half of the states in the country have the ability of the people, when the legislature passes a law that they do not like, that the people don't like, that they would be able to go to referendum and repeal that law so that it cannot stay on the books. So right now, there's a, a really, a, there's a great deal of limits. If, if the legislature passes something like a massive tax increase or something like that, that the vast majority of the public says, you know what, we don't like that. They would, under this proposal, have the ability to go out, collect petition signatures, put a measure on the ballot that then would repeal that law. Uh, again, 24 states have this. This is, again, kind of small d democratic type of processes that empower voters and we think is vitally important for us to be able to make sure that the voters feel like they are empowered once again in a state where we've had uh, routine corruption, so many issues where the people have felt powerless, and so many people, frankly, are leaving the state in droves. I th we think that it's very important for us to be able to put power back into the hands of voters so at the end of the day, all of us work for them instead of the voters feeling like they work for the legislators. So with that, I want to kick it over to Representative Batnick to talk about the third constitutional amendment that is being proposed here. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Leader McConkie. Appreciate it. The, this is one leg of the three-legged stool, the voter empowerment package, and we had talked about it a little bit briefly before. And I had filed versions of this previously, but this is certainly expanded. And this allows for a recall of all elected officials in the state, excluding judges. And then a couple of additions: it is the Auditor General, the Senate President, and the Speaker of the House, who we realize. The Senate President and the Speaker of the House wield great authority over what is happening um, with, with legislation in, in the state. And we, we've seen 
we've seen bad actors and there's no way of dislodging them from their uh, from their position. You know, we have a situation right now between the Auditor General, the, a, a sitting state Senate senator that's under investigation and has been indicted. But more importantly, numerous local officials that have been caught doing doing things bad. And and the, unfortunately, there's been numerous examples right here uh, in and around my, in my district that need to be addressed. And we need to give the citizens the ability to remove these people from office when they deem that it should be done. And most importantly, I look at this as preventative medicine. If somebody knows that there's the ability for them to be recalled, I think they're gonna act a little bit better and maybe do the right thing on their own. The mechanics of this is, is really important. And, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Senate, Senator Barrickman, who's gonna talk about the mechanics of this process. Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Batnick. And uh, as Representative Batnick and uh, Leader McConkie have said, Illinois has a long history of cr uh, governmental corruption at, at really all levels. Um, my constituents feel powerless in what they do about uh, this uh, because they feel that the system stacked against them. So these uh, voter empowerment uh, initiatives and constitutional amendments are designed to empower uh, our constituents around the state, Illinoisans, and to ensure that our government is effective, efficient, and that the people who represent Illinoisans are accountable to them. And so in that regard, uh, as it relates to the recall provision, uh, we looked around the country at some of the best practices that exist in blue and red, sta in blue and red states all around the, the US. Many states allow for a recall provision. Illinois has a recall provision that's wildly limited and only applies to the office of the governor. In fact, it's very cumbersome. It has uh, barriers to it that make it uh, nearly impossible to use. So we propose a constitutional amendment that uh, extends the recall provisions in Illinois to all statewide constitutional officers, the Speaker of the House, the Senate President, Auditor General, each member of the General Assembly, and importantly, even to local government officials. Uh, we impose a signature threshold. Uh, this is to make sure that these uh, powers are not abused, but that there, uh, there are some reasonable protections in place. We require 12% of uh, voters, 12% uh, of those who voted uh, for governor in the last gubernatorial election must circulate a petition. Uh, to demonstrate that there's broad-based support for recalling the individual, uh, then voters have an opportunity to vote. And if 60% of voters vote to recall an individual, that individual is barred from serving in office for a period of 10 years, barred from serving in that office for a period of 10 years. Uh, this, again, is a, is a uh, proposal that's designed to empower voters and ensure that those who are representing Illinoisans are accountable uh, to them. With that, I'll turn it over to Leader Durkin. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jim Durkin, House Republican Leader, Western Springs, Illinois. I'm pleased to be joined today with uh, Senator McConkie, Senator, uh, Senate Leader McConkie, Senate, uh, Senator Jason Berrickman, and Representative Mark Batnick. For too long, the citizens of Illinois have been taken advantage of by the political machine in our state. High taxes skyrocket skyrocketing debt levels have left Illinoisans disillusioned with Illinois government. When you add the rampant corruption that has pervaded government and, and the highly regulated corporations, we're experiencing that right now, it is clear that the needs of the citizens have been ignored for the benefit of the connected few insiders. In previous years, citizens tried to take back their government through referendum, such as in instituting nonpartisan maps by collecting over half a million signatures. But the political insiders used the courts in Cook County to strike down those petitions. Very, very disappointing. Once again, this left the voices of Illinois citizens unheard. We have seen residents show their utter disdain with Illinois by packing up and leaving. Just last year, Illinois saw a population drop of around 80,000 Illinoisans, the most since World War II and the second largest of any state in the nation. I hear it every day from people within the state of Illinois, from my neighborhood, people in Chicago, um, especially now when the first property tax bill comes in the mail, what is happening to the state and what can be done to fix it? But it's always heartbreaking. And unfortunately, I sound like a broken record. I say that we're trying, we're trying to reform Illinois, we're trying to institute property tax reform, ethics reform, 
but every year we run into a brick wall, year in, year out. But let me name a few. Property tax, pro, the property tax task force that did nothing to lower property tax bills is just another stunt, another stunt by the Democrats to avoid the problems that they have created. The Ethics Reform Commission af created after Representative and Re Democrat leader Louis Arroyo was arrested for bribery. Now remember, this is a, a bribery attempt against a sitting Democrat state senator who was wearing a wire for the feds. You can't make this stuff up in Hollywood. All this commotion, a lot of noise that we have to change the, you know, the course of our work in, in Springfield. They set up a commission. They failed to produce a report. We never took a vote on ethics reform. The General Assembly continues to stick its head in the sand as our state continues to dangerously veer in the wrong direction. Today, we are proposing a package that will finally give the people of Illinois a chance to be in control of their government and give them their voice back. The package of changes will be a check and balance on the unlimited power of the General Assembly, of what, had, what the General Assembly has shown over these decades. But with this passage, the days of unbridled control by one person or certain individuals will be over. Critics will say that it will do too much and change too many things. But I say its biggest flaw is that it didn't happen sooner. We see other states give power to its citizens, so what are we afraid of in Illinois? 